In this, our final section of the course, we're going to talk about Monte Carlo simulation. And in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Monte Carlo simulation. And Monte Carlo simulation, or the Monte Carlo method, is a stepwise approach to solving problems that may not have a single answer due to some uncertainty. In investing, we can see this uncertainty as volatility. So we may have an expected return, but this is really probably the average return. And any individual year, that return is going to vary. The amount it varies by is what we call volatility. To model volatility, what we're going to do is use some standard deviation of a specific distribution. And the idea behind Monte Carlo is that by repeatedly simulating, or running potential ending values will develop a distribution of the portfolio ending value, and then we'll be able to make probability statements about that portfolio ending value. So we'll go ahead and jump right into a notebook to get started. So in this example, we're going to suppose that we're starting with $100,000 in maybe our IRA, and we have it invested in an S&P like ETF. So I've set up some variables ahead of time. We're going to have $100,000. We're going to expect to earn 9.5% every year. And we're going to look at what that's worth in 30 years time. So I'm going to go ahead and do it the deterministic way first. So we'll print a nice heading. And our heading will contain the year and an ending balance. We'll print a dividing line. And then what we'll do is we'll create a loop that goes through and looks at the ending balance in each year. Okay, so we'll start at the end of year one, and then we'll go out to the 30th year. Once we get there, we can start looking at a new value for the ending balance, which is just going to be. Uh, the beginning balance times 1 plus the expected rate of return. Once we get that, we can print it out. Okay, I'm going to put in the comma separator, and I'm going to ignore the decimal points here with large numbers. They're just distracting. And then we'll just format. We'll get our year and our ending balance. And then before we go into the next iteration of this loop, we're going to have to set the present value equal to whatever the ending value is. Okay, so with that we should be able to run that cell and we get a nice little table. And if we want to left align, I'll do it again. You have to kind of be careful about running this multiple times because every time I go through this loop, it's picking up whatever the ending balance was from the previous 30 runs. So obviously, we're not going to have around 23 million at the end of this period. All right, so I have to run the first cell again. And then with the present value reset, when I run this, okay, I get what, what I should get. All right, so if we look down through this, we can see we're reliably earning that 9.5% each year. And by the end of year 30, we have a million and a half. That's not bad. But the question is, can we reliably earn that 9.5% every year? And the answer really is no. That may be an average over the long run, but in any subgroup of years going forward, we're going to have to incorporate some measurement of volatility. Okay, so these numbers I'm using, you'll find all kinds of different numbers out there for long run expected return and volatility investing in the S&P 500. I am using some conservative numbers here, and in some ways I'm doing that so I can incorporate the idea of inflation. So a lot of the numbers you'll see out there might be something like 11.2 or 10.7, something like that. But those are 
nominal returns and not real rates of return. So I'm trying to incorporate inflation in here. You can use any numbers you like to sort of generate something similar. Now, instead of saying we get this 9.5% each year, what we're saying is that, well, the 9.5% is the mean return, and then there's this standard deviation or volatility of 18.5%. So to model that, what I'm going to do is import NumPy, and actually I'm just going to import the random module from NumPy. I'm going to start the same way I did with the $100,000, the expected return, all right, the time horizon's the same, and then the ending balance I'm setting at zero. And then we're setting up our table the same way. The only change I'm making in here is that my year's return is going to be based on the normal distribution with a mean of the expected return and a standard deviation of that volatility. And then you can argue whether or not the market returns follow a normal distribution. And there's quite a bit of research out there that suggests, well, maybe they don't. Maybe the tails are a bit fatter. But this is still a good approximation of what we can expect to see. So everything else is the same. When I run this cell, we'll see what happens uh, to our ending balance. If we go back up, we can compare this directly to the deterministic output. But you can already see in the first year, well, we didn't earn 9%. All right, we earned something like 6%. And in the second year, looks like we got a pretty good return, maybe something over 9%. But then the third year, we had a loss. So instead of going up, our portfolio value went down. Okay, and scanning down through this, we see that the ending balance is quite a bit different than what we had under the deterministic model, which suggested we'd have 1.5 million. This method says that, well, we'll have just over a million. Let's see what happens if we run it again. So if I run it again, I get a different stream of returns. All right, again, we went up in the first year, up in the second year, down in the third, all right, and so forth, and down at the bottom. Oh, now I have 1.8 million. That sounds good. Maybe we should choose that one. If I run it again, we get yet a different ending balance. The question is, which one do we choose? And we can't really choose one, all right, just because we like it better than the other. What we need to do is run this loop many times, maybe 10,000, 20,000, to get an idea of all the possible things that could happen. And then we can start to make probability statements about what our ending balance could look like.